unmolested fast break layup. You have got to do a better job than Brandon Cole did here. You've got to protect the basketball. He puts it way out there and says, here it is, Billy Wright, come and get it. Billy Wright not only makes the block, he doesn't foul and gets the ball going the other way. Here's a wide open three. It's an air ball. Brian Bowden, whoa, he wasn't ready for it. Air ball, everyone on DePaul relaxed and Funches gets the stick back. Part of the Mullen Army here at Bradley that Jim Molinari has instituted. They're into it. Goldrist goes on top for Parker. Baseline punches, runs into Brian Fulton, and the foul call. And Joey Meyer is furious on the sidelines with Brian Bowden. You have got to step up and take a charge. Brian Bowden, all he did was go right at the body of Dwayne Funches. There's no doubt that's a foul. Set yourself up, take the baseline away, and take a charge. Adebayo Akinkule is checked in for Bradley. You're smooth at that one. I, th I thought you'd like that. <laughs> Second free throw. And Jackson with the offensive rebound block, but a foul called on Will Macon. And DePaul has got some serious discussion right now about blocking out on the free throw. Well, DePaul's relaxing. Every time the ball goes up, rather than finding a body and boxing out, they're relaxing. And that's what's created the air ball that they get a stick back on. This shot here, a missed free throw where they're going to get another two-shot opportunity. You cannot continue to do that, especially on the road against a quality team like Bradley. Jackson will get one more. He's averaging 10. He's got seven points already. Misses that one, and Akinkale was there, but the ball pulls it away. Will Macon gets the rebound. Weinschmidt on the wing, goes on top, Macon takes the shot. And the ball starts to set it up a little bit. Weinschmidt moves inside, nice pass baseline, and a blocking foul. Wow, the official first set offensive foul, then changed and called the block. And Brandon Cole may have banged up the wrist. Great pass by Tom Kleinschmidt. That's a great call by the official. There's no chance that that is a charging foul. Cole's lucky he's not seriously injured. He took a hard fall. Jermaine Watts checks in as Peter Patton will sit, and Brandon Cole is kind of walking off that collision. As Patton coming off. They banged up the wrist a little, Brandon Cole. We'll see if it affects him here at the free throw line. Jermaine Watts, Sunnyside High School, Tucson, Arizona. This guy's going to prove to be a real steal and a real coup for Joey Meyer and his staff. He can really play. Got great quicks, great athleticism. You watch him in a pregame dunk contest. This guy's as good as it gets as he learns the Division I ranks, the college game. I'm telling you, Jermaine Watts is going to be a real good player for DePaul for four years. Cole with his first two points, and DePaul comes out with some full court pressure here. Looks like a 2 2 1. They'll trap near half court. Oh, and Cole almost got that one. There's the trap. Parker cross court. Jackson with a fake. Brings it back for three. He just lost it, and Tommy Kleinschmidt comes up with a loose ball. Now, Watts can really go. With Watts and Cole at the guards, this is a ball club that will run every opportunity. And Akinkale picks up the personal foul. Well, Adebayo Akinkale, a kid out of Chicago Morgan Park. If you look at him, Adebayo, get in the cafeteria, start eating some of the starches. You've got to put a little weight on. He just physically is not going to be able to handle either Will Macon or Brian Bowden, especially Bowden, who you need camp bear to get around on the low post. This kid is well built. Substitutions now. Klein came back in. King Goulet picked up his second. Watts on the right side now. Down low. Bowden. The jump hook, and that's a beautiful shot. He's a scorer. That kid can score. He can shoot the ball from three-point range and has the freedom in the new offense. Joe's letting him look at some of the open trades he may get. Brian Furry set to check in for DePaul. Klein way back out on top for Zobris. DePaul, a very aggressive zone. Right goes baseline. Klein knocks it down. The baseline jump shot on the left baseline, and the left-hander hits. 
Ross Gordon will make it with the scoop inside. When you get against the zone, you give it to the big guy down low and then get the man coming from the free throw line. Just like that, that's a pretty play. Ball again in the zone. Wright thought about that three, but Bowden over and picked him up. Now he'll take the three. Wright couldn't get it, and Kleinschmidt there again. That Great ankle injury doesn't seem to have hurt him at all. Strong rebound. Kleinschmidt. Watch baseline for three. And that one stuck in the corner and a foul call. Well, they're going to get Ben Coupe, I believe. Get out of Simeon. Ben was highly recruited out of high school, looked at several different options, ended up coming down here to Bradley. And if this kid continues to work in a weight room, listens to Coach Molinari, does what he's supposed to, he can be a very good player here. Very good. He's got skills. DePaul leads it by three here. About 12 and a half minutes left in the first half. Kleinschmidt brings it inside with the fake baseline. Curry a little short. Bowden fought for the rebound and Klein called for the foul. Official said Chad Klein got him on the, on, the, on the block out. There's the shot. Now he kisses rim. Not a bad call. Willie Sanchez right on top of it. The crowd doesn't like it. Mo doesn't like it, but if you watch the replay, definitely Klein's got us some of Bowden's arm. Willie Sanchez with a good call right on top of it. That's why he's the official. Brandon Gold checks out. Peter Patton comes in. So the ball with a fresh 35 on the shot clock. To the foul situation, five for the Braves, and make it six now as the reach in is called. Well, when Tom Kleinschmidt gets his body into the painted area, the slim, trim, spelt Tommy Kleinschmidt, he gets himself in a paint. You're not going to stop that kid. There's nothing Zobras can do but hack away and try and slow down a freight train. Kleinschmidt looks great. Deion Jackson comes out as he picks up the foul. Anthony Parker comes back in. Watts gives it back to Kleinschmidt. And he'll take a long three. Patton had it for a second. Curry lays it up, can't buy it. Parker taps it out. Here comes Oldrick. The ball with a couple good chances. Oh, Watts had it and lost it. The ball going for those passing lanes. Parker goes out on top to Zobris, and the Braves will set it up now. It gets the man to man of the ball. Okay, turnaround jumper. Nice, quick move. A good, quick move. Sling it up there. Get it over the hands. Nice shot. Ben Coupe, very athletic 6'9", 6'10", player. The ball with a one-point lead. has been on 15 for a while now. Will make it a check back in. Kleinschmidt gets it to Curry on the right side, and he kisses it off the glass. Well, Tommy is like that point forward. He gets in the lane. Everybody knows where he is because he's such a factor, and he finds guys for open 15-footers. Good passing by Kleinschmidt. Zobris thought about the three. Now gets it back. this time. Parker comes inside into the corner. Baseline three. Well, that kid's Dobrik. in the game for one thing. One thing only is to shoot it. you got to know where your shooters are. When Anthony Parker drives, somebody's got to be assigned to step out on Zobrist. He does one thing in his mind. He does it great. Bradley crowd making some noise and Watts quiets him. Jermaine Watts with a quick move down the left side. The ball takes the lead back. Down low. Coupe hit one of those a second ago. He's going to have to put a body on him, force him to step outside his range on the low block. And a good shooter puts up the three and a foul call. Brian Bowden will pick up the personal foul. So Brian Bolton will pick up the personal foul, and with 10 minutes, 12 seconds left in the first half, we're tied at 19. 19-19, Blue Demons and Braves, 10-12 left first half. Jermaine Watts, the freshman, 
Nice looking little kiss off the glass as he drives in traffic. Bradley, though, gets Ben Coupe a good quality look. Little jump hook, he beats the traffic, scores it. Got a 19-19 ball game. Great environment, great college hoops. The thing I like about Coupe is you said he's got that nice quick turnaround. He knows right where that basket is. Parker brings it out on top to Paul and the man to man. Fine looking for Coupe. Now Brandon Cole will check back in for the ball. Wright's going to back it off. Now he calls a different play. Well, I think it's a great move by Joey Meyer to put Frank Schmidt on right rather than Anthony Parker. Doesn't create a foul situation. Parker missed that one. Coupe with the tip, and Will Macon pulls it away for the Blue Demons. Wright got a little quick, almost lost the ball. Franchman on the side, looks down low for Corey. Now kicks it back on top for Will Macon. Guy who in the first game rebounded and scored very well as the ball is kicked. And they'll reset the shot clock. Here comes Brandon Cole. And Deion Jackson will come back in for Bradley. Uh, Joey going with a quick back court now. And you got Cole and Watts. You can do some things in pressure situations. You rest Pat in a bit. You may be able to go in the three-guard rotation. Bunches comes back in as two pace sits down. Boy, it's a great environment. Oh, this is beautiful. Big time. Feinstein with a pretty pass inside of Brian Curry. Boy, screen roll. He does a great job at disguising like he's going to shoot it, Tommy. And it dumps it into Curry for the easy layup. Brian Posey set the check back in as Bradley loses it out of bounds. If I ever coach again, I want a guy like Tom Kleinschmidt because you win with Tom Kleinschmidt. Would you rather have Kleinschmidt or Bird? Maybe Magic if you wanted to pick a team? <laughs> you know, I mean, who else I'll do you want all. here? I'll yeah. take them all. Yeah. I'll play you at center. You and a lot of other guys. Well, you got to have a weak link. <laughs> Watts brings it across as Marcus Singer gets set to check in for the call. I wouldn't be surprised to see DePaul go a little smaller here. Schmidt in the paint, got bumped, puts it off the glass, and it wouldn't fall. Jackson with the rebound, and now Bradley tries to come down and tie it up, or take the lead on this three. Quick shot. Moda's not like that. He's hot, and I don't blame him. Quick shot, not a good look. Making travel. So Bradley gets it back. Here comes Singer. And DePaul's going to take Tommy Kleinschmidt out. So Joey Meyer takes Kleinschmidt out and comes with Singer, who can really fill it up when he gets on a roll, David. Marcus Singer was brought here just like Zobris for Brad. Shoot the basketball. Marcus has a little bit more size than Zobris, but he's got the same kind of range. Streaky, and all of a sudden throw up those four, five, three-pointers. This kid can play. Maybe make it instead of shoot it. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Watts went for the steal. On top, Parker puts up a quick three and just drained that. He came right around that screen and saw it all the way. Had one thing on his mind when he caught that. Square up and score. He's got six points, two three-pointers. And we're... Bradley with the lead. Watts again brings it down. Macon with a rebound. Comes in strong. Put it in. Count it and he's fouled. Will Macon with a good rebound. Well, you know, Jim Molinari... His teams will guard first, score second. Watts with a little bit of a crazy shot, but Will Macon right there. Johnny on the spot, throws it up, draws the contract. Real good job by Macon. He's a rebounder. He goes for the ball. Now he knows he's got a situation. Get it up there and see if he can score it. Gets the three-point play. But I was going to say, Jim Molinari's teams will guard first, score later. He would like to see these guys do a better job at the defensive end. And they can do that. This is a good ball club, both sides. 7.46 left, first half. DePaul leads by two. Well, they get into it here, don't they? They are fired up. This is what college basketball is all about. I know you've worked in the NBA for a lot of years. NBA's got great, great players, but I don't think you get the environment that you get in a gym like this. Very, very few places. Very seldom. The ball comes out with full court pressure. Very easily, Bradley breaks it. Klein takes the 15-footer, and it's taken right away. Here comes Watts. He's got Singer on one side, Cole on the other, and takes it himself. Not a good shot, but a tip in by Brian Bowden. Great tip by Bowden. Get the big body up, the one pawn, say sorry, it's going back in. I don't know. 
I think that was more. Look what I found. <laughs> Might have been. Uh -huh. He won't admit it to films, though. Right on the baseline. And Fine strong with the rebound. Lost it out of bounds. And it'll belong to Bradley, they say. is. How about this? How about the current home arena consecutive wins in Division One? Indiana out in front of everybody. UMass, a great team. Gonzaga and Bradley, number four with 21 straight here. And that's all the credit to Jim Molinari. He put this whole thing together. I was talking before. Attendance was down when he got here. He has re-energized this program under Dick Versace. They had some great, great moments, but that's several years back now. And Mo and Mullen Army that they've got here have done a great job. Coming up on the seven-minute mark of the first half. The ball's got the four-point lead. Bradley looking to get it inside. They got the high-low post working. Now the corner. Baseline three. A little shy. Watts went very high for that rebound. He really got up. Brandon Cole gives it back to Marcus Singer. The ball tried the break. Bradley got back very quickly. the quick move. Dishes back to Watts who comes inside. Had it blocked. Good block by Billy Wright. Here he comes and Marcus Singer will pick up the foul. Marcus Singer is very lucky if they don't call this an intentional foul. He did nothing more than swipe right at the body. Jermaine Watts here does not protect the ball either. You must protect the ball when you're a small man going into the paint. Marcus Singer just takes a swipe at Billy Wright. It's very lucky that they call that a, sh a foul out on the floor. Patton and Kleinschmidt come back in for DePaul. Non-shooting foul. City got him at the free throw line. NBA, that may be continuation, but in college they say no. Still dribbling basketball. DePaul in a 2-3 zone. Here. Bradley recognizes very quickly. King Goulet back in is over. Has it on the wing, gets it on top. but net for Zobris. Boy, he shoots the eye right at Tommy Klein. That kid can shoot the basketball. Bowden. Strong move inside. Just a little too strong. No arc on the ball. Bradley with a chance to take the lead back. Bounces inside. Lost it out of bounds. And it belonged to the ball. That's where a kid like a Kindle has got to get in the weight room so he puts some pounds on, gets stronger so he can hold off a guy like a Will Macon and go get the basketball there. He was just physically overmatched. Schmidt was open for a second, didn't take the three. Great move inside, gets it back, and goaltending. Had to be goaltending. And Coupe will come back in. Ben Coupe quickly up off the bench for Jim Molinari. Hey, the thing that would concern me if I was Jim Molinari, you look at DePaul and you say, okay, they're not a great shooting team. They don't have a Brad Neiman out there that can really fill it up, the great DePaul three-point shooter. They don't have someone like that in the lineup because Cole has not stepped up and become what everyone thought he would be, a great perimeter player. But DePaul is dominating around the glass. When they get rebounds, they're a very tough team to beat. Zobrist. I heard Jalinari say easy. He was screaming on the sidelines. Zobrist looked like he was going right to the basket. Makes the fake. This is a long two, and he hits that. I tell you what, he get, you're right. He squares up and gets great looks when he takes shots. Make a video of how that kid shoots. Bowden, baseline move, puts it off the board and in. Brian Bowden with the easy basket. He has really started to improve. Lost a little bit of weight. Probably could slim another 8, 10, 12 pounds off the body. But this kid can score. Zobrist, baseline move. They're running one-hander. He's got 10 points now. That kid was a walk-on coming out of high school. Jim Molinari, scholar in the countryside to find that one. The Paul with a one-point lead in this Artisan Bradley crowd starts to make some noise. Brandon Cole inside. The Paul again on the board, but couldn't get it. And he walked. Traveling called inside, and Jim Molinari is jumping up and down on the sideline. He is working Willie Sanchez, and Willie turns and says, he traveled, Jim. 
Brandon Cole with the runner inside. There's Bowden on the glass. Probably should have caught it and come back down. There goes Anthony Parker. Wet ticky tack. Questionable. Brandon Cole might have whacked him on the arm. Klein Schmidt with a force three and rebound pulled down by Coupe. Gets it out to Parker. Quick three. Nope. Rebound goes over the top and it's the Paul's ball. We have got a spirited crowd here in a good ball game. Three minutes, 58 seconds left here in the first half, and DePaul holds a one-point lead. The Blue Demons, 30. Bradley Braves, 29, 358 left. Bradley has a shooter extraordinaire by the best shooter in this game, kid named Aaron Zobris. Not only does he have range, but he takes it among the trees, sees Brian Bowden flying at him, kiss it off the glass, get the deuce. That kid can play, Tom Doyle. DePaul leading the rebounding battle, 15 to 12. There you see the field goal percentage so far. Macon almost lost it. Down low, finds Kleinschmidt, got bumped. Oh, nice pass inside to Bowden. That was big time. That's why you win with Tom Kleinschmidt, because he doesn't have just one thing on his mind. It's win. That's what he wants to do. Right. Comes off the screen on top. Zobrist, another three. He is unconscious, Cappy. Take him back to United Center. Put him with the ball. That kid can shoot it. 13 first-half points for Zobrist. And we're tied at 32, and almost everybody in the place is on their feet. Cole gets it back, puts up a three, and that's just a dagger in their hearts. Wow. Big three for Brandon Cole. Well, he's got to continue to do that. For DePaul to have a good season, they must get point production out of Brandon Cole. He's got to be able to shoot the basketball. Parker came off the screen, looking to get it inside. Instead, they go on top to Coupe. Baseline, jump shot, bounces, and two blue shirts right there, and Will Macon takes it and walks. Say he shuffled his feet, now it's Joey Myers' turn to scour at the official. Right, Mo just looks down and says, Joey, I know what you're going through, buddy. I just had it at the other end. There's a pass. Kleinschmidt almost gets the steal. Right misses the little bunny. Now you get Will Macon. He gets tied up with his teammate. No doubt. No doubt that's a travel. Bunch is trying to help the official just a little bit with the call. And a fresh 35 on the shot clock. How about 5 of 13 for Bradley from 3? 5 of 14 now as Kleinschmidt gets the rebound. It's a slow down. That's his sixth rebound of the game. He leads all, all players. Got close to that in assists already. Patton goes to Brandon Cole. Finds Kleinschmidt. Starts to penetrate partially blocked. A nice block by Parker and a blocking foul on Tom Kleinschmidt. He knew it. He knew it. Tommy was a little frustrated. He has, he's, he's known as a scorer. He hasn't got a lot of good looks at the basket. I think he was a little frustrated. That's a good call by Tommy Rucker. Veteran official out of the great Midwest Conference. Will Macon checks back in. Brian Bowden will sit down. Two minutes, 11 seconds left here. First half, DePaul with a three-point lead. It's been very close throughout. DePaul has pretty well led most of the ball game. Bradley has come close a couple times, but it's been mostly the Blue Demons. Baseline, Klein hit one from there a couple minutes ago. Can't find this one as Brandon Cole gets the rebound. Making on the wing, looking down low. Takes the shot, now goes baseline. Pulls up, tough shot. And Kleinschmidt knocked it loose, but Zobris right there for Bradley. Parker comes inside, beautiful move. Went below the backboard, came back, and just flicked it off the glass. Well, he's tired. He, they've got to get a sub in for him. He is just dog tired, physically getting pounded at both ends. Kleinschmidt got bumped by Klein. Finds Macon on the baseline, and the high archer goes in for Will Macon. Now, why is it so hard for Will Macon to understand? That's where he should be shooting the ball, not 18 to 23 feet. Good luck by Kleinschmidt, again with an assist. As 
Dover's three would have tied it. What a beautiful play by Coupe. The rolling hook down the lane. And it's back to a one-point to Paul Lee. Brian Schmidt with the fake. Gets Parker in the air. And the ball tapped loose. Here comes Parker down the other end. Three on one to Coupe. And he lost it, but a foul called. Peter Patton will pick up the personal foul. Uh, DePaul too nonchalant with the basketball. When they get in the half-court set, they're too nonchalant with it. They don't take care of the ball like that's a prize, a treasure that's in your hands. You can't throw the ball away consistently and be successful. Great fake by Anthony Parker. Gets the ball to Coupe, sets up the situation. This was just a minute ago. Boy, I love that. Little baby hook inside. He just gets it up so quick he doesn't give anyone a chance to put a body on him, move him out, or follow him. Would you put that paint on? And I think I've seen you with paint like that on your face before. Yeah, I went as you for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> hey, missed the first. Okay, touche. That's not bad. I'll give you that. Uh, hey, Gary. Mom, look what I'm doing with your $12,000 a year. Paint <laughs> <laughs> my face. Terry Burrell comes in. Zobers leaves. He gets a great hand as he comes off the floor. Kerry Burrell, another Chicago Public League player. Mo has done a tremendous job at recruiting the Public League. Really has brought some good players to Bradley. Another substitution. James Baptist checks in. Coupe will leave, and Ben Coupe gets a great hand. Hey, what they love their Braves, don't they? They're into it. This is college basketball. <laughs> They're on their feet again. And you know what's interesting? They're on their feet on defense here instead of offense. That's Jim Molinari. The ball way out now with their offense. Bradley has forced them almost to the half-court track. With Kleinschmidt out, running down to the end now. Patton comes off the screen, fakes the shot. Got to get a shot quick now. Cole with a long three. And the rebound, Klein, and a foul. Just as the horn sounded, Peter Patton reached in and picked up the foul. He's trying to talk the official into saying it was after the buzzer, but no, we got a one and one as we're heading that's, toward halftime. That's a major mistake there by Peter Patton. I mean, you have got to know where you're at and how much time is left. There's definitely time left on the clock. No doubt there was time on the clock. Whether it's a foul or not, you can't put yourself in that situation. Klein misses the front end of the one and one, and now, yeah, we are at halftime. He went back saying, do I get two shots? Can no, I have one another one, one, please? Uh, we are at halftime here at the Civic Center in Peoria. The Bradley Braves and the Paul Blue Demons have played. But he had no. We're back here in Peoria. We got a tie ball game. Bradley Braves and the Paul Blue Demons. And we saw we had some great action in the first half. You know, David, DePaul got off to a nice start. It looked like they were playing very well. And then Zobris comes in and just takes over the game. And that's what a good three-point shooter can do. Right. He will open things up in the painted area. He will make shots, get open looks, and really confuse DePaul's defense. Can you believe this kid was a walk-on out of high school? Nobody wanted him. So Jim Molinari says, sorry, walk on it, Bradley. If you play well, we'll give you a scholarship. He's a scholarship player as a sophomore. That'd be my guess. I don't think there's any question this guy can really play. Uh, or should I say he can really shoot it? The injury to Tommy Kleinschmidt, did you see any evidence of that in the first half? What injury? Not a factor. Tom Kleinschmidt's a stallion. This kid passes well, rebounds, defends, scores, team leader. I'm sure he's going to have some words for his buddies inside saying, would you guys please get on the glass? This is the newest Bradley recruit, I think, right here. They got the baby race going on out here in just a second. It's, I tell you what, I like the atmosphere here. Yeah, I think Molinari is now going into the hospitals and signing these babies as soon as they're born. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a great night here. We're tied at 37 and halftime here at the Civic Center, the DePaul Blue Demons. And are you ready for the race? Well, David Kaplan will tell you who the winner is. Commissioner of the Missouri Valley, Doug Elgin's coming up next. <laughs> Bradley Braves and DePaul Blue Demons are tied at 37, and we got a special guest here. It's nice to welcome Doug Elgin, Commissioner of the Missouri Valley, alongside. You know what? I've seen this guy so many times, but it's at a different venue. We usually meet at the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska, where Wichita State has been just... This kid, he wants to shoot the three there, says, I'm taking Kleinschmidt to the basket. Good job with the body. Doesn't have the strength to overpower. Lays it in. Real good job. And then they've got the shooter that opens things up. Best shooter going in the game. This guy can play. Aaron Zobris, deep, deep three, nothing but the bottom of the net. 
But when you go back for DePaul and you spell everything out, it spells TK, Tom Kleinschmidt. Klein does a great job taking the baseline away. So Tom Kleinschmidt finds Will Macon, the little three or four foot bunny. Scores that one. Kleinschmidt also comes back and gets the job done. Gets himself into the paint. Coupe leaves his man to help out. And there's the dump off to Bryant Bowden. Lays it in. That's what DePaul has to continue to do. Pound away three, four feet from the basket. And the DePaul Blue Demon certainly can do that. As uh, I tell you what, Ken Bradley, this is a ball club that, you know, you and I were talking earlier about the great job that Jim Molinari has done with, uh, with this ball club. But Robbie Judson, his assistant, is an outstanding recruiter, was one of the best shooters that came out of Chicago, maybe until Zobrist. I played a little bit with Judson during the summers and 16 to 35. Bradley, just a little bit better, 54%, but they've made one less. Free throws, you see Bradley not very good at all. Two of seven. DePaul, three of three. Rebounds, DePaul with a couple more offensive rebounds is where DePaul's made a big difference. Turnovers, both teams at, uh, at eight and three-pointers. Five of 14 for Bradley. Zobrist has been the real key there. He's three of three from out there. Leading scores for DePaul, Brian Bowden with 10, Will Macon with nine, Cole with five, Curry and Kleinschmidt have four each. For Bradley Zobris with 13 off the bench. Parker's got eight. Jackson and Coupe with seven. And Klein with that baseline jump shot has two. Tommy Kleinschmidt with four points, seven first half assists, and six rebounds. You said he had more assists than points. He does. That kid can really play. He'll be a key here in the second half, but I'll expect him to score more points here in the second 20 minutes. Kleinschmidt pops out. Now brings it to the right side, calls out the play. Bowden gives it back to Kleinschmidt. He thought about the three, but waited just a little long. Patton. Good patience out of the ball here. You think they want to go to Bowden. That's what it looked like. Bowden with the jump hook. Bryant Bowden with another strong move. Boy, he looks like a stallion in there with that jump hook. So DePaul comes back and takes the lead here in the second half. Bowden with 12 now. Baseline jump shot. He was hot in the first half. Yeah, he's got the big, strong frame. He can bang, and he shows he's got a little range, too. Schmidt slices through. Bowden wanted it. Gets it inside. And as long as they front by it, Brian Bowden with no help on the weak side, he'll score all night long. Yeah, there's no one Bradley has that can guard him one-on-one, -on -one, four feet in. He's just too strong. If you front him, you've got to have somebody on the weak side to come over and help. Right on the top, gets it over. Punches on the baseline, throws it in. Nice move. That's a pretty bucket. Yeah, show you some card skills there a little bit. Dribble, drive, break someone down and score it. Tied again at 41. Kleinschmidt on top for Patton. The ball will swing it back and forth a lot. Looking to go back to Kleinschmidt. The pass was deflected, and it's four on one with Wright. Drops it inside, and the layup good. Neon Jackson ran the floor, got the layup, and the Braves have a two-point lead. The ball is too careless sometimes, Tom. They get the ball in the scoring area, and they're too careless with it. Here they are. Defense, that crowd gets up again. Patton takes the three from 17. Parker and a blocking foul on Peter Patton. Tough to get that call in the open court, especially on the road. It's just not going to go DePaul's way on that type of call. Bradley doing a real nice job at only allowing DePaul one shot here early. Klein comes out as Coupe comes back in for Bradley. Billy Wright, the governor of Tempo, takes it down and finds Deion Jackson. He's got the scores mentality, and he just physically can overpower Brandon Cole. There's a foul on Patton. He was moving. And as you say, at half court, you don't get that call. No. You could be planting cement, you're not going to get the call. Well, maybe if you were in cement, you might get it. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Watt's going to check back in for DePaul. His right has it. On top. Parker. Ooh, tough shot on the baseline. Rebound Coupe with a pretty move. Boy, Ben Coupe doing a nice job. He catches it. He gets it out of his hand so quick. That's what I really am impressed with. Macon takes the shot, takes it inside, had it partially blocked by Coupe. He's been a major force in the game. Now he wants to bring it up the floor. Molinari's going to take talk to him in a second, I think. 
You don't ever dribble the ball. No. You get down where you belong. In the red area. Uh-huh. Listen to this place. This crowd is going nuts. Right? And Parker on the baseline. Back on top. Right open three off to the right. And Will making loss. Didn't a foul call. They get Dwayne Funches, I think. Going to get Funches for the push from behind. Yep, Dwayne Funches. Anthony Parker, I think, is frustrated. He's not getting some shots. Billy Wright gets a wide open look, and I mean, that is a brick and a half. You can build an arena with a shot like that. You're not very nice sometimes. I don't understand that. As terrible a shooter as you were, you don't know, you don't know that. I put Leiden out of their misery. Yeah, I bet. You're Cole Smith school. gives it to Cole. There's the baseline. Making with the rebound. Put it back. And that's what DePaul did in the first half. David to take the lead. Yep, they have got to dominate around the basket. You can't say it enough. Must continue to use their strength. That's what they've got going for them tonight as an advantage. Right. Link to the floor lays it in. What a nice move. Switch hands, brought it down, drops it home. And where DePaul led most of the first half, Bradley took an early lead here and hadn't relinquished. Down low to Macon. Baseline jump shot. Will Macon couldn't get it. The Golden there fixed. Puts it in. Play. Count it and he's fouled by Ben Coupe. Uh, Brian Bowden wanted the ball on the block. Didn't get it. Jermaine Watts went away from him. And he looked at the freshman and said, get me the ball. Will Macon takes the shot. Doesn't get it. But Bowden is in that zone right now. He's getting good breaks. He's making breaks for himself. He's using his body. That was a touch foul to him. He thought, what is that, a mosquito? Fly? Get off me. Bunches of leave. You know, I think your whole problem is you're not excited about this job. We've got to talk about that at some point in time. <laughs> oh, man. I'm in heaven, baby. College hoops working with you. Doesn't get any better than this. Got to get it in bounds, and they just do. The call out with that pressure. Oh, Klein with a bounce pass. And Wright will bring it back out. Baseline jump shot. Jackson with a pretty one down there. Got the open look, and he's a scorer. And he got going early in the first half. Watts for three, tried to tie it up. That was a quick shot. Jackson with a rebound. Here he comes down the floor. Parker comes out to the corner. Jackson trying to make a two in a row. Can't, and the ball tapped out. It belongs to DePaul. You know, for many teams, they'll take that quick shot. That's not what Jim Molinari wants. He's not about transit, and he's about good shot opportunities and hard defense. The Mola Army is up on their feet here in Peoria as the Braves lead it by three. Presenting the Smart Clapper. How smart can it be? The Smart Clapper lets you turn two appliances on or off at the same time, and it knows the difference. Clap twice to control one, three times to control the other. It's easy. Plug two appliances into the Smart Clapper. Then... Three minutes. And DePaul trying to cut back into this lead. A lot of Chicago connection here, huh? A lot of Chicago ball players. Both these coaches rely on the fertile ground of the Chicago area for their recruiting. Heinzman on the baseline gives it back to Bowden. And he throws it away. Cole tried to save it, and he did. Great save by Brandon Cole. Watts comes off the screen. See how they're doing in the second half. Bradley's great second half. DePaul struggling just a little bit. Brian Schmidt gets him in the air, off the glass. Bowden with the tip, and lost that one. Making fights for it, but Parker comes up with it. Four Brown, we're in almost the backcourt. Very close. Right between the circles now calls out the play. Bradley leads it by three, and Tommy Klein Schmidt will get the foul. Tommy just a bit late getting over. That's his second foul, not in any type of foul trouble. Good entry pass. Deion Jackson had the obvious scoring layup, but Klein Schmidt committed the foul. Just didn't get there in time. A little bit late. Looking for the open man, and finally Klein gets it on the high low. Parker comes inside, lost it, and Brandon Cole comes away. Cole at the free throw line, comes up short, went for the rebound, couldn't get it. Now here comes Bradley the other way. Oh, nice play in 
side. Reverse layup is good. You know what, though? Let's go back to the other end. Well, you've got big guys filling lanes like Macon, Bowden, Brandon. Brandon Cole has got to find Will Macon in that situation. That was a selfish play. That was a poor decision by Brandon Cole. Watts goes to the wing. Macon for three. Too strong. And here again comes Bradley. A 12-5 run in the last four and a half minutes. Coupe inside with the jump hook. Joey better get a timeout. This one's getting away from him a bit. And that's just what DePaul does. Joey Meyer has called a timeout. 13 minutes, 48 seconds left. And Bradley is on a run. getting out in transition beautiful ball fake super job by Zion Jackson for the little lay in Bradley playing outstanding Parker inside the coupe boy that kid gets it up quick Bradley in the second half 8 of 11 from the field 75 percent to Paul 4 of 13 31 percent Paul goes baseline for Curry and gets it back on top, Feinsman. This is the guy that's got to bring him back. And the three is just a little short. And a rebound foul on Klein. Good call. No doubt about it. Jim Molinari doesn't think so, but his guys just can't physically match up with some of the DePaul bodies. There's, I, I don't, there's no doubt that DePaul's just a stronger team, and they're trying to force out Brian Bowden. There's no doubt. Klein with the foul. He's a guilty party. Watts on the wing, tries to beat everybody. Now he'll bring it back. Fine Smith. Good defense by Jackson. Cole bounces inside for Bowden, gets it to Curry. Still a lot of time on the shot clock. Fine Smith will back it out and take the three. And he's missed two in a row of those now, and Zobers gets the rebound. And a big possession here for Bradley. They can really get some momentum. And tough turnover. A tough turnover. Yeah, that one hurts. That one really hurts. Got a chance to put some big time distance between Bradley and DePaul. And they don't take care of the basketball. Now, DePaul has got to come down here and look at that guy, Brian Foden. Jam the ball into him on the post, see if he can create a foul situation. And I'll tell you what, if Will Macon comes back into the game and shoots a perimeter jump shot and misses it again, even if he takes it, just takes it, Joey Myers going to break his arm. You're sure about that. Last three and a half minutes, DePaul has not... Put it in. 0 for 6 in that time. They haven't had a lot of good looks at the basket either. Tell you one thing Bradley's doing is doing a great job on this guy, Tommy Kleins, but there is always a hand in his face. Watts fakes the shot, puts it off the glass. Bolden right there. Gets him off the crown, put it in, and Brian Bolden again with a big basket for DePaul. Well, Mo keeps looking down at the end of the bench. Who can I put in that can handle this big body? Not too many guys. He is just that strong. As good a shooter as Zobris is is how big a body this guy is. They just both have a great skill better than anyone in the ballgame. No doubt there's the foul situation. He gets it up on the glass. This kid is scoring tonight. Marcus Singer comes in. Tommy Kleinschmidt goes to sit down. There's Singer. When Kleinschmidt fell yesterday, I understand he tripped. He fell over a manager, something like that. There you see Punchy just left for, uh, for Bradley as Bowden goes to the free throw line. But sprained that ankle and hurt that thumb and that he just doesn't seem to be the same on offense and the trouble shooting the ball a lot of credit to Bradley they're doing a great job they are 53 49 now Bradley with the lead Wright picks it up and punches gives it back to Zobris this is the guy that hit everything in the first half Shot clock at 10 now. DePaul doing a pretty good job playing the passing lanes here. Right with three on the shot clock and a blocking foul on Brandon Cole and Joey Meyer up with that one. Brandon Cole looks around. And says, How can you call that on me? 
think he was moving, though. Good call. Tell you what, this crew's done a very, very good job. Close. Very close. Very close. And the offense usually gets a close one. The home team gets a close one. Rush 35 on the shot clock. 53-49. Bradley with it. Zobris for three. And a foul inside. Brian Curry was there with his arm on somebody's shoulder. Trying to hold punches back from getting to the glass. Zobris gets the gets the look. Pretty good look. Misses it. And it's tough to tell there. Tough to tell, but probably cleared out. Anthony Parker will check back in. He got and his yeah, quick breathing. In. Yeah, that wasn't long, was Quick it? Quick breather for Anthony Parker, and Mo will probably ask him to play most of the rest of the way. Wright sneaks inside, gives it back. Zobrist over to Klein. They thought about that quick shot. Wright right down, gives it to Klein off the glass. Oh, that just wouldn't stay in. Curry lost it, and Bradley gets it back. Uh, Bradley got away with a foul there. Bradley got away with a hack there, no question. Joey parking at the end next to us. Zobris takes the three, comes inside, baseline, Klein with the jumper. Zobris with the rebound, caught it, and put it in all in the air. Well, that's a heck of a play out of that kid. Who said he's just a shooter? You did. I thought you might have forgotten uh -huh. that point. Peter Patton set the check in. Marcus Singer goes down low to Bowden. Watch. And a foul call. I'll call that one on the floor, I'm sure, on the pass off. Aaron Zobris calls for it. Here comes Patton as Brandon Cole will leave. Cole sits next to Tommy Kleinschmidt. 55 49, Bradley with the lead. I tell you, Bradley has really shown me some defense here in the second half. Watts, and it just would not stay in, and Bowden came over the back, and we got a foul called on Chad Klein. They'll call him for the push. Jim Molinari absolutely irate on the sidelines. But again, it's tough for Chad Klein to handle that big body. Watts should square up and shoot that thing. Tough to tell. I mean, Bowden has an arm out. Certainly looked like he was going over the top, but Klein also backing into him. Very tough to tell there. Very tough. Crowd certainly doesn't like it. So DePaul gets new life now. Down by six. Coming up on ten and a half left in the second half. Patton down to Bowden. Inside, triple team puts it up, and he missed it. And Tommy Kleinschmidt will check back in for the ball. Another big possession for Bradley. Chance to get something going without Kleinschmidt on the floor. Right. Goes baseline cut off. Punches with the lay-in. Real good-looking entry pass. Billy Wright. The point guard gets along the baseline, makes something happen. Good job by Bradley. Can't say enough good things about the things Jim Molinari's done here. Watts comes inside. His pass was deflected. But a foul called. Offensive foul called on Watts on the pass off. Freshmen will learn you don't leave your feet without having an idea what you want to do and where you're going to come down. Jermaine Watts, he leaves his feet, got nowhere to go. No doubt about that call. Tommy Rucker right on it. Charge easy. Fifty-seven forty-nine. a chance to put this one in double figures now for Bradley. Right comes across the timeline. comes way out. Zobris down the wing. Down low and Punches just lost it. He just flat lost the ball. Had himself a chance. Oh. Got three. Both waving his brow saying, wow, that ball. 
inside is looking for position a foul called against Bradley. Bunches will pick up the personal foul. Well, I think if DePaul could get themselves in a situation with Bowden on the low block, a shooter on the wing, either a Cole or a Patton or a Singer, and Kleinschmidt out top in that point forward position, that triangle alignment would allow Kleinschmidt either to dribble drive, the shot from the perimeter, or a chance to get Bowden the ball inside. Bowden hits the first, he'll get one more. 57 to 50 now. Bowden with 21 points. Well above that season average. So Briss takes his time, gives it back, and gets it back. 57-51. Now a six-point Bradley lead. So Briss makes the move, goes to the wing. Right down low for Jackson on Kleinschmidt and a foul call. Brandon Cole reached in and picks up the personal foul. And Kleinschmidt's upset. He's barking at the official on the baseline about something. Well, Tommy's playing definitely behind. Now Brandon Cole digs down there and really tries to help out. There's no doubt about the foul there. Tommy's got something on his mind, though. He is really upset about something with the officials. Well, it didn't look to be that, that he was fouled at all in terms of a backing down situation. Well, but maybe it's something else that they're talking about. Maybe it's not this particular possession. Maybe he's talking something about when he's got end. the ball on the other end. Right. Got to be. Jackson, not a strong free throw shooter, 54%. All above his season average. Coupe gets set to check back in. And Funches will leave. Now, Coupe will try to alter some shots now, try and limit what Bowden can do. Again, DePaul has to start getting into that alignment where they've got Bowden, Kleinschmidt, and a shooter at the same time on the same side of the floor. Kleinschmidt on top. Jackson right there defensively. Kleinschmidt spins, gives it back. Cole, a tough three and a foul call. Dolbrus got him on the wrist. And so Brandon Cole will go to the free throw line and should get three free throws. He will. He'll get all three from the line. Now he goes up. Zobris is a good distance away from him, no doubt. Great call. Great camera work, guys. Way to be on top of that. So Brandon Cole will go to the free throw line with three free throws. Not bad for a season average. Certainly. Come for your enthusiasm. Well. I understand. This kid has so much skill. It's frightening. I mean, he's got great range. Got to step up and have a great senior season. Chad Fine will come back in. And Aaron Zobris will leave. So now they're going to get a little bit bigger. They're going to go after Brian Bolden, I would think. Maybe try and front him with Coupe and have Fine on the weak side or vice versa. Something like that. Missed the third one. Bowden tips it once, and Jackson comes away. Now they almost got a four-point play on that with the two free throws and Bowden's tip. Very close. Came very close. Right to the wing. Parker, a tough three. Might have gotten blocked. And Bowden gives it back to Kleinschmidt. Ball in there. Was up looking for the same call for the other end. Bowden gives it back to Kleinschmidt. And Tommy for three, and that's off. Bowden there again, but couldn't get it. Patton tipped it, and a foul called on the rebound. And it's against the Paul, whomever the foul is on. Marcus Singer. I think they're going to get Marcus Singer. Yeah. Well, DePaul has certainly had some chances now, David. You see this? Yeah, just can't hit the outside shot. That's right. That's an open look for Tommy. He didn't come close. Now, Bowden has got to make that. Has got to convert that shot. There's Marcus Singer just flailing away wildly into the pack. Bowden, instead of going straight up with that layup, 
Went a little forward and was out of position. Dupay with the first of the one and one. Rebound, Brian Bowden. Tell you what, when he gets it, there aren't many people that are going to take it away. No. Watts will check back in. Kleinschmidt on top, looking to make the move. Spins. Oh, nice pass inside. Bowden couldn't get it. And Klein with a rebound. Bowden with three chances in the last couple minutes and unable to convert any one of them. Two for 11 from the field as well. Minkman also set to check in. Jackson, baseline, couldn't buy it. And Bryant Bowden again right there. Snatches that thing down. Kleinschmidt was calling for the ball all the way down the floor. Into the corner. Oh, for three. That's Tom Kleinschmidt setting up his running, buddy. Brandon Cole, great job by Kleinschmidt. Get the paint and then get the ball to your, your open shooter on the wing. Great, great job by those two guys. And Jim Molinari wants a timeout. He saw that three and said, we need the back to point lead and the ball. Chad Klein throws it away. The Paul may have taken Bradley's best punch. Kleinschmidt draws the double team in the paint. Finds Brandon Cole. That's what he was recruited to do. Make threes. If you think back a few years ago, Brad Neiman would bury shots like that consistently. He's the all-time three-point shooter in DePaul history, but Brandon Cole hot on his heels, only seven behind. This half, four of nine the first four minutes, last nine just two of 15 for DePaul, and yet, David, they're only three points down now. They've taken the best that Bradley can offer. It'll be interesting to see. Strong moves inside, no foul call. Tommy Kleinschmidt called his team together and said, we need a stop here as they were going down the floor. Well, Will Macon banging with the body. Clutch foul. There's something called the principle of verticality. You cannot jump into the defensive man. That's a questionable call. Questionable call. Probably should have been a no call. Jackson makes the first, and he's got one more coming. 60 to 56. Joey Meyer, a little concerned right now. Jackson well above that season average. Four point difference in the ball game. Kleinschmidt falls out the play. Starts to back in. Gets the opening over to Brandon Cole. Cole takes the three, comes inside off the glass. Brandon Cole with a big bucket. It's a two point game here. Peoria. Fine. Who looks for the open man? Two DePaul players had it. Now they finally do get it. Watts almost lost it. Well, Watts went up to like a defensive back to make that catch. Fine's been on the right side. DePaul can tie it here with a two. On top, Brandon Cole. Blue Demon's back on top, now 61-60. The ball still in that man-to-man. Arms over us gets set to check back in. Loose ball and a foul call. Your death, Tom. Your death's wrong. Will Minkin picks up the foul. You know what you're finding out quick in this season about DePaul? That they're not deep, that they're starting to define their rotation. It's going to be about seven guys. You're going to have your five starters. Brian Curry's going to get some time. Jermaine Watts is going to get some time. And Marcus Singer. They'll have eight players, but they certainly aren't going to have that big, strong, deep front line that you need in the awesome great Midwest. Jackson will get one more. Who do you like in the great Midwest this year? To win it, Cincinnati. Deep, talented, and they got an unbelievable coach in Bobby Huggins. Jackson takes his time at the line. That one rolls in. So it's a seesaw affair now. DePaul had the lead at one end. 
Bradley comes back, gets it at the other. Watts just flat lost it, but it went right to Cole. Brandon Cole backs it off. Patton for three. And Zobris with a rebound. Brian Bowden gets set to check back in for the Blue Demons. Zobris wanted that shot. Five minutes remain. Jackson and Brandon Cole called for the foul. Well, that's a tough matchup. Brandon Cole on Keon Jackson. Jim Molinari will take that ball in the post every single time down the floor just because of the size and the strength factor. So Jackson will go to the line here. Joey Meyer out teaching on the floor right now. Talking with Peter Patton about not getting Brandon Cole caught up in a low post situation. Helping out down there. Dive another guard down and prevent the ball from coming into the block on that side until you get your defense reset. The last five minutes, Bradley has not had a field goal. Everything they've had has come from the free throw line. Jackson, nice night, 19 and 6. Looking for number 20. And it's 64 61 now in favor of the Braves. And again, DePaul comes down on offense and they stand on defense. Feinschmidt, tough move, and he went down hard. Feinschmidt went down very hard, rolls over, and he'll get back up. Well, this kid's had quite a Quite a last 24 hours, hasn't he? You couldn't get this guy out of the game no matter what they did to him. He gets into the paint. Bradley says, hey, you're going you're gonna to earn this one. Down he goes. Three white shirts around him. That was probably a, a break for Bradley there to get the foul because Kleinschmidt with three guys around him had dished for an open look. Now Kleinschmidt gets the front end of the one and one. A little house cleaning. There's the man, Joey Meyer. Guy's maligned. He's a heck of a coach. Oh. Feinschmidt with the unusual style, a little jump shot on the free throw. These two coaches here are what college athletics is all about. Class guys doing it the right way. Too many people don't seem to want to open their eyes and listen to what some people are saying. These two guys are the type of person you want your kid to play for. Fine with the rebound. You can't say that much better. A two-point Bradley lead now with 440 remaining. Right looks for the open man. Jackson gives it back. Over to Parker. Fine down low. Fine Schmidt came over and tried to knock it away and picks up the foul. And all Joey Meyer can do is shake his head. Ball gets entered into the post. Tommy Kleinschmidt saw the loose ball there, reached around, committed the foul, thought he had a chance to steal. But Deion Jackson came into the game shooting 53.8% from the line. I know it's early, but a lot of people said he can't shoot free throws. I was about to compliment you, Deion. Boy, you're making a bunch in a row. I'm going to compliment you. What do you do? Make a liar out of it. He has shot a bunch of free throws here in the second half. Makes the second one. And it's 65 62 now. Bradley with a lead. DePaul trying to get a good shot. Feinschmidt on the post. His pass deflected, went to Watts from 15. Watts with a left hand drops it in. Well, a good looking little dribble move. Shook the defender and got himself a shot. Bradley up by one with about four minutes remaining. Parker looks down low, finds Jackson back to Parker, fakes the three. Out to Klein for three. That's a big basket. Kid's been quiet all night. He gets this crowd rocking and rolling again. Here they are in their 
his feet again. Feinschmidt comes inside, gets him in the air, hangs. No foul on the play. Well, I thought I heard a whistle, too. Joe and Meyer barking in the official's ear as Wright brings it across the timeline. Watch goes for the steal. There's a foul. Feinschmidt, it looked like, got hit on the shot. Now, he was on the other side of the floor from us. Boy, ended up flat on his back. Feinschmidt, the dribble drive, gathers himself, gets the defender in the air. Oh, yeah, all over the arm. No doubt about a foul there. Officials miss it, and it goes the other way. Right hits the first. It's 69-64 now in favor of Bradley. Official talking to Kleinschmidt, and I think he told him to be quiet. I think he said that's enough. Now, when you're a senior, you get the chance to talk to the official a little bit more than you do as a freshman. We've got a timeout on the floor. They are all on their feet here at the convention center. Three minutes, 21 seconds left. And there, Bradley Braves lead to the Paul Blue Demons 70 to 64 into it they smell a big time victory and this would be a great confidence builder for bradley because it's a victory over a well-known nationally known opponent in state we a battle with recruits and the teacher and the pupil the coach golden wants it down low and has it with flying on him cole comes off the screen comes inside got fouled and he'll go to the line for a couple Brandon Cole with the good, quick move. He'll go to the free throw line. And both teams now in the bonus. They'll get two free throws every time. Uh, Silvers is in there to shoot the ball. He can't defend. That was about as bad as you'll ever see on textbook defense. Will Macon set the check back in? Patton will leave. Three minutes remain and a five-point Bradley lead here in Peoria. Knight brings it to the wing. on top for Klein. The ball a little more aggressive this time defensively. Jackson gives it back to Klein. Baseline. Fake the three. Zobris would have liked to have had that again. Right. Shake and bake move. Fade away. Jumper is good. That's what a pretty a, move. That's a heck of a shot. Billy Wright as Kleinschmidt comes right down the floor. Looks for the opening. Kicks it back. Watts for three. And Parker with a rebound. Big possession for Bradley now. Wide open, Pine put it in. And DePaul wants a timeout. Pine for two shots with 45.7 seconds remaining. And again, we're glad you stayed with us. As we can bring you the pictures again here. Bradley with an 11-point lead and 45.7 left, David. Coming into the game, Billy Wright was only two of six at the line, 33 percent. DePaul is in a world of hurts, though, right here if he knocks these down. Wright has one more. Two of three, and he's up to 33, and he makes that one. 78-66 now. Kleinschmidt comes down, spins in the lane, hands and hits. Tommy Kleinschmidt wants the timeout, and DePaul will get it. With 37.8 seconds remaining, David will stay here and talk about this now. Because DePaul gets the timeout. Now they're down by 10. Marcus Singer will check back in for the Blue Demons. And first of all, let's go to each huddle. Let's go down to Bradley real quick and talk about the Braves because they're in great shape right now. Well, 10-point lead, 37.8. What they'll have to do is avoid a turnover here against full-court pressure. They may try and break somebody long. They'll definitely want to get the ball in the hands of good free-throw shooters. 
possibly a guy like Anthony Parker, your, your scorer, your leader. This is a guy that makes free throws, can really get the job done, and is fairly strong with the basketball. Jim Molinari, all he's concerned with is get the ball in bounds, guys. Get it in bounds and try and get it in Billy Wright's hands so we don't have a problem, that we don't have our best ball handler handling it against pressure. Because if DePaul doesn't get it, they're going to foul right away. Quick. Blue Demons, Joey Meyer talking to them right now, and that's got to be what this conversation is not a, not totally about, though, because it's got to be, look, you got to foul right away, but when you get it back on offense, here's what you got to do as you see Bradley from the free throw line. You talk about Parker. But again, you have to temper those percentages because it's so early in the season sometimes a guy has a slow start and may be a much better free throw shooter than those percentages indicate so it's going to be interesting I'm sure Joey scoured last year's stats as well to see who he should be following possibly even check the exhibition games to see who has uh, who on Bradley misses free throws with regularity nail biter for coach Myers he's hollering right now Joe Howard and Marcus Singer to stay in front of Jackson. Patton went for it. Parker gets it. And, ooh, finds Schmidt with a collision with Zobrist. And Tommy was either going to get the ball or get a foul. And Schmidt <laughs> picks up the foul. Sean Gale would be proud of that. Yeah, I was going to say, that uh, that's a hit. It may have been a first down, but that's a good hit. Dave Watts said, if you're home watching the game, if he doesn't make any NBA, maybe he wants to play safety for you. Weinschmidt will come out. He's, he's grimacing. That, uh, that thumb hurts him. He's limping That's, a little bit. It's it, been a tough day for him. Yeah, it's really affected his ability to score and shoot the basketball. And even the Bradley crowd gives him the ovation. Class move. Zobris with the career high trying to add to that dunk. Seventy nine sixty eight now. Thirty four and some change left. Cole almost lost it and he did. The next start dancing in Peoria. There are a few of them that have started. Klein, one of the guys you want to foul is watch trying to get him. Right gets it ahead to Zobra. And he'll take his time. Right cuts through, bounces it inside. Watts tipped it, and the shot clock is off. Terry Burrell comes in. Deion Jackson will leave. Well, this is a real good win for Jim Molinari. You got to take your hat off to what he's accomplished here. Get a look at Anthony Parker as he'll check out. Anthony, keep hitting the weights. You're going to make some money playing the game someday. He's just got to get stronger. He's a real quality kid. Rob Judson, future head coach there, barking on the sidelines. Can't say enough how fine Bradley played tonight. Very good job. And DePaul have to regroup and get ready to play again this weekend. Kin Kule. And now Bradley just going to play keep away. Right. Looks for somebody to get it to. And he walked. With 4.6 seconds remaining. And you know what? Jim Molinari is still hollering about the call. Patton gets it on the side. Tried to put it up. Knocked away. Zobris will bring it down. Let it go from half court. And I was going to say. It would have only been fitting if that one would have gone in. Jim Molinari, Joey Meyer shake hands at midcourt, and a big, big win here at home for the Bradley Braves. That's a huge one. Real good win. DePaul will be okay. They've got a good team. Klein Schmidt was banged up tonight, but you can't make any excuses for DePaul. you got to give all the credit to that guy right there. He has just energized this town, this crowd. This is a great, great victory for Bradley, and it speaks volumes about what they're going to be this season. They're going to guard you. They're going to take good shots, and I'll tell you what, if they get play like that out of Zobris like they had tonight, 20 points, anything close to it, Bradley's going to have themselves an NBC trophy sitting in the trophy case here. All right, so the final score here, the Bradley Braves get it 80 to 68. Whoa, what a ball game we had. The Braves down the stretch played very well. Come out of here with a win for David.